though he had just then nothing to do. So, uh, taking old Bradford, whom he had never seen before, to be one of the townspeople, not a printer from uh, New York or a printer from Philadelphia who had new moved to New York or any special important person, not the father of the person running the other printing office in town, he thinks that Mr. Uh, Bradford was just some guy with Ben Franklin. Uh, and taking old Bradford, whom he had never seen before, to be one of the townspeople that had a good will for him, right? He thinks this guy's bringing someone, an employee for him, right? He entered into a conversation on his present undertaking and prospects. While Bradford, not showing uh, that he was the other printer's father, on Keimer saying that he expected soon to get the greatest part of the business in his own hands, drew him on by artful questions and starting little doubts to explain all his views, what influence he relied on and in what manner he intended to proceed. I, who stood by and heard all, saw immediately that one was a crafty old sophister and the other a true novice. Bradford left me with Keimer, who was greatly surprised when I told him who the old man was. The uh, printing house I found consisted of an old damaged press and a small worn out font in English type. The printing house I found consisted of an old damaged press and a small worn out font of English type. He was presently using this type to compose an elegy on Aquila Rose, his uh, <coughs> before mentioned, uh, so that couldn't be used for anything else, that particular typeset. And we skip a little while down here. Uh, I begin now to have some acquaintance among the young people of the town that were lovers of reading, with whom I spent my evenings very pleasantly, and gained money by my industry and frugality. Uh, skip a little bit there. Let's see. Okay, so he's living in Boston, or living in Philadelphia, and he says he tries to forget Boston as much as he could. Um, but something happens. This guy, <coughs> a brother-in-law, Robert Holmes, master of a sloop that traded between Boston and Delaware, uh, was at Newcastle, 40 miles past Philadelphia, and heard that Benjamin Franklin was there in town. Quote, he wrote me a letter mentioning the grief of my relations and friends in Boston at my abrupt departure assuring me of their good will to me and that everything would be accommodated to my mind if I would return to Boston, to which he entreated me earnestly. So he writes a reply to this guy. He says, no thanks. I, I think I'll stick around. Uh, <clears throat> and when the guy gets the letter, when his brother-in-law gets the letter, Sir William Keith, the governor of the province, was then at Newcastle, and Captain Holmes happening to be in company with him, they were just sitting together, it happens, when the letter came to hand, spoke to him of me. He said, here's this lad, listen about this boy, and showed him the letter. The governor read it and seemed surprised when he was told my age. Now that is just all the pieces of luck falling together. But you could say it's a stroke of luck. Ben Franklin's letter just happens to get to this guy while the governor is sitting there. Governor of the province. And he's like, this boy is how old? What an intelligent letter, and so on. But it's not so much a stroke of luck, because the governor could have been sitting there, and the guy could have got a letter from anybody in any circumstance, and it wouldn't have been it just a, a letter. Oh, this 17-year-old boy wrote to me, there it is. But when he hears, oh, this is a 17-year-old boy? So it's the fact that Ben Franklin had the tools and got exposed to the governor that way rather than a stroke of luck or a bolt of lightning that was, you know, just a good point in his life to send him off in the right direction. Because we'll see, it uh, is a good experience for him. The governor said that I appeared a young man of promising parts and therefore should be encouraged. The printers of Philadelphia were wretched ones, and if I would set up there, he made no doubt I should succeed. Now, just, just saying this, to the guy or as they have read this letter. And so the governor ends up going to Philadelphia to meet Ben. And they come and they knock at the door of the printing house where Ben's working with this Putz Keimer. 
So Keimer ran down immediately, thinking it a visit to him. But the governor inquired for me. He came up, and with a condescension and politeness that I had been quite unused to, made him many compliments, desired to be acquainted with me, blamed me kindly for not having made myself known to him when I first came to the place, and would have me away with him to the tavern, where he was going with Colonel French to taste, he said, some excellent Madeira. I was not a little surprised, and Keimer stared with astonishment. I went, however, with the governor and Colonel French to a tavern at the corner of Third Street, and over the Madeira he proposed my setting up my business. Uh, now, Ben says, uh, I can't open a business, my father wouldn't uh, you know, agree, and he says, I'll write you a personal letter to your father. So, uh, in the meantime, it was to be kept a secret, and I was to go on working for Chimera as usual. The governor sent for me now and then to dine with him, which I considered a great honor, more particularly as he conversed with me in a most affable, familiar, and friendly manner. What an honor for this 17-year-old boy to be invited to the home of the governor. Uh, I mean, it's just fantastic. About the end of April 1724, he gets on a boat and goes uh, back to Boston. We arrived safe in Boston at, uh, in about a fortnight and had been uh, about seven months. He had been about seven months away. He went to see James at his printing house. And this is all his family was happy to see him and stuff. We skip a little bit. He went to see James at his printing house. I was better dressed than ever while in his service, having a genteel new suit from head to foot, a watch, and my pockets lined with near five pounds sterling in silver. He received me not very frankly, looked me all over, and turned to his work again. Uh, he talks to his brother's employees for a minute uh, there in the shop, uh, and then he, he, they ask him what does the money there look like, uh, and he, so he's able to show him his coins, right, they ask. And then he gave them a dollar to drink, and took his leave. How generous of him. This visit of mine offended James extremely, for when my brother sometime after spoke to him of a reconciliation and of her wish to see us on good terms, he said I had insulted him in such a manner before his people that he could not forget or forgive it. My father received the governor's letter with some surprise, but said little of it to me for some time. Captain Holmes, returning, he showed it to him and asked him if he knew where Sir William Keith, if he knew Sir William Keith and what kind of man he was, adding that he must be of small discretion to think of setting up a youth in a business wanting three years to arrive at a man's estate. Holmes said that he could in favor, he said what he could in favor of the project, but my father was decidedly against it. No, 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 this is not going to work. He's not 21 yet and he can't set up a business. Uh, he wrote a civil letter to Sir William, thanking him for the patronage that he had so kindly offered me, and declined to assist me as yet in setting up, I being, in his opinion, too young, to be trusted with the management and undertaking so important. So he's going to go back to Philadelphia, and his friend Collins decides to go with him. Uh, and then continuing a little further down, my father, though he did not approve Sir William's proposition, was yet pleased that I had been able to obtain so advantageous a character from a person of such note where I had resided. So he gave his consent to my returning again to Philadelphia. He advised me to behave respectfully to the people there and endeavor to obtain the general esteem and avoid lampooning and libeling, to which he thought I had too much inclination, T and uh, telling me that by steady industry and prudent parsimony I might save enough by the time he was 21 to set me up and that if I came near the matter, he would help me out with the rest. So on the way to New York, they stop in Rhode Island, and Ben visits with his brother John. Uh, and John has a friend over, and this friend has a debt to be called in Philadelphia. So John says, will you uh, go collect this 35 pounds for me uh, in Philadelphia, and uh, keep it until my directions of what to uh, use it for. Accordingly, he gave me an order to receive the money. Uh, this business afterwards occasioned me a good deal of unease. Let me skip a great deal here to go down to the bottom of the page we go. At New York, I found my friend Collins, who had arrived there some time before me. Now, Collins was a good character previously, even more learned 